If I could do anything, I would really just like to get music in the house somehow. I can't wait to restore the, um, the chandelier. It needs to be cleaned and then turned on. And that, when you walk in that front foyer, it's gonna be uh, spectacular. The house was designed by Catherine Budd, who was one of the first female architects admitted to the American Institute of Architects. There is some places it's written that the kickoff or the grand opening for the public and to Mr. Howie's customer base, was in 1927 when they opened it for the New York Civic Opera that played out in the yard. The second owner was Marvell Zona, who bought it out of the estate of Mrs. Howie when she passed away in 1983 and 1984. I think sometimes the people around here look at this more as um, just maybe Howie in the Hills history. It is goes far beyond that. For this part of Florida, everything about this house is unusual. It's a centerpiece to the Howie in the Hills community. A lot of people say it's gonna take millions and millions of dollars to bring it up to code, and I just really don't see it. It's really in very good condition. Well, we've done our best right now to preserve um, some into the interior of the home from some flat roof damage. The clay tile barrel tile roof, that is actually in great repair. I have, we've been up in the attic. There are no leaks from that. I think that that really falls in the face of a lot of people say that the house is falling down or that it's going to burn down. Neither of those two things are true. My son Bradley was actually doing some of the heavy cleanup work on the property, so I came out looked at it, it was all overgrown, it had, a, it was really, um, it was really dirty, it was hard to see the beauty at that point. One of my favorite features of the house is the mermaid fountain in the backyard in the meditation garden. We have a, a lot of volunteers, people who've been attracted to this house from all over the world. We're aligning ourselves with a couple of nonprofits that have educational um, pieces as their mission statement, and we would really like to keep it um, slanted towards the arts and music so that we can always engage that artistic side of each of us. Well, I'd like to bring the house back up to a museum quality restoration and then allow for an authentic historic experience. What I'd like to do for the immediate future is uh, requisition the town government, the local government, to allow us to open up at least the yard and maybe the ballroom to some fundraising events so that we can raise awareness and the funds necessary to uh, bring that house, uh, to buy the house out of the current legal uh, mess that it's in and to have some funds set aside to restore it and then I would like to be able to open it up for um, as a visitor center, art and cultural center, educational center. Well I think it's really important that we um, save our history and preserve it and you know, learn from it. I think one of the things that's important that people understand is that we're not trying to change this house into something that it's not. The historical value of the house is the most important thing, really, to keep it the integrity of 
what was there. I would like everyone to know that we are taking this very um, seriously, that this property is being cared for the best that is possible considering the budget limitations that we have. When I see the kids, how excited they are about it, and the people that just, um, I, I, it, the house has some kind of a power. I've had a, a photographer come in from um, Germany. I've had people come from, in, tell me they're from Norway, that they heard about it on the internet. Uh, people from Belgium, all over the world, people have an interest in this story and in this house. I find it incredibly amazing, actually.